Welcome to the first Dan's Digital Director. This is my director magazine on video. And today I'm going to talk about the most important issue that you need to deal with, pricing. Pricing is not about math. It's about doing the right thing for the right reason with the right math. Today, I'm going to walk you through exactly the logic and the mathematics of doing pricing to guarantee your profitability. Pricing is a really simple exercise. Figure out the cash flow that you need to generate through your business. You've got overhead, you've got cases coming in. How much do you charge for each case? Very simply, take your overhead divided by the number of cases. It's simple. But if it is so simple, how have we been screwing it up since the FTC changed your pricing through the funeral rule? Hmm. If it is so simple, let Uncle Dan explain to you how we screwed it up, but it takes a history lesson. 40 years ago, before the Federal Trade Commission entered into the ruling that we now call the funeral rule, pricing was simple. Funeral homeowners took the price of a casket, marked it up four or five times, and the consumers got all of the services and merchandise that they needed predicated upon what casket they picked. Simple. But the FTC ruled that we had to go to itemized pricing. And itemized pricing gave you 16 different ways that you can screw up your prices. Imagine if you will, you had to take your pricing and divide it by these 16 different categories of services and you had no idea what went where. So what did you do? You guessed. Now, not you and, and not your parents, your grandparents. They guessed and they guessed wrong. Then, each year thereafter, they had to increase their prices because they understood costs went up. And they would multiply it by some factor that was totally wrong. So, 16 different prices times 40 years of changes times a factor that's totally wrong, your result is going to be wrong. And Let's add that along the way, somebody came up to them and said, Hey, Tom down the street's prices are less than yours. You know, Tom down the street, he's the idiot. The one you always said was dumb as dirt. And what did you do? You weren't going to let Tom beat you on price. So you did the math wrong and then subtracted something from that. It's simple. We didn't have the courage of the conviction to do the math right, and therefore we are in a precarious situation. Today, profit margins in 1985 when the FTC entered into the funeral rule were 14% of revenue on average. Today, about 5%. Don't try telling me you've been doing it right. Keep in mind, in 1980, the cremation rate was three to 5%. Even those heretics in California were around 15%. So what happened? As cremation increased, the error that you were making in setting your cremation prices became more and more cataclysmic. See, when cremation was only 3% of your total needs, it didn't matter if you screwed it up. But today, it's 50%, 55%. 60%. You cannot remain in business taxing the burial families who are the minority to pay for the error in pricing on the majority. So how do we change brothers and sisters? Basically, we adopt courage and courage is in mathematics. Step number one, figure out what your overhead is. Well, your overhead is divided into two categories. First, your operating overhead. And secondly, your financial overhead. 
Operating overhead is everything that you know you need to spend money on to keep your doors open. And financial, well, that's all the stuff in the background. It's the principal on the mortgages that you're paying because they're not deductible. It's the capital that you need to reinvest in your business. It's the taxes that you need to pay in cash money when you have profit and profit. Because if you don't build profit into your overhead, trust me, the odds are overwhelming. You won't have any. So operating overhead plus financial overhead equals total overhead. And that's how much we have to generate. The first point of recovery comes from merchandise. You're going to sell caskets. You're going to sell urns, paper, vaults, etc. And that's free money coming down. That reduces the amount of the total overhead you need to recover. After we recover that from the sale of merchandise, what's left is your service fee because that's the only way you can break even. Your service fee is going to be a function of how many families you serve. Now, as you guess how many families to serve, I want you to understand, I want you to guess wrong. What? Guess wrong? Well, let's assume you serve 200 families a year for the last three years. And I want to make sure that you have the profit, the overhead, all the cash flow you need. Should I assume 200 families are going to be served? No. The law of large numbers is predictable, but mortality only resembles the law of large numbers. So I'm going to ask you to pick a number that is something less. I want you to be wrong. Now, if we cover your overhead with a number that is 90% or 85% of your case count, then what difference does it make? You're protected. In the event you're wrong is actually right. Now you're going to generate 200 calls and you're going to have more cash flow. So wrong is good. Right is wrong. Get it. Ultimately, once you arrive at a price, you have to have the courage to be able to say that price to families without stuttering. Your failure to do this is going to cause you to have an ineffective pricing scenario. In other words, it costs you the same basic non-declinable, whether a family is choosing to bury or cremate their loved one. You can't have a basic non-declinable. That is one number for cremation and another number for burial. Now I'm not saying that's wrong in the eyes of the federal trade commission. I'm saying it's wrong in the eyes of math because it costs you the same amount to have your building, have your minimum staff, make arrangements for a family, have a place to shelter the loved one, whether that loved one is ultimately going to be buried or cremated. You cannot say cremation is going to take less and therefore I'll reduce my basic non-declinable. It doesn't work that way. So what do you do if your community is ultimately balking at your pricing? Well, you can't match somebody else's price unless you match their overhead. So what do you do to reduce your overhead? Well, the number one cost of overhead is staffing. So if your staff starts telling you that your prices are too high and they don't feel comfortable representing your business at those prices, have them draw straws and fire the one with the short straw. Now I'm not trying to be mean spirited, but staffing is the number one cost of operation. And if you have to drop your overhead, then fire the person that is the least effective professional employee. The other option is find other sources of revenue. Maybe you need to bring in 
your own crematory rather than using a third party. Once you're doing about 90 cases a year, it'll break even in about 10 years. Or maybe you need to add a reception center or maybe blend a reception center and a cremation area into one small building. Or maybe look at selling more pre-need or sell more services or enter into contracts to add repatriation or DNA services to your at need and pre-need offerings. The bottom line is you either raise revenue or cut overhead if you have to drop prices. Setting prices is not about math. It's about trial and error. Try something. See what happens. If your prices are not communicated effectively to families, then change your prices, but don't give up too soon. Ultimately, we've learned through our surveys that we've done on tens of thousands of families that have worked with our clients each year. 89% of all families do not shop funerals. It's not that they don't care what the price is. They perceive that they're getting value from you based upon your trusting relationship. Of the 11% that do shop, typically only about 2% actually shop more than two funeral homes. Do the right thing and realize that your business may not be right to serve everyone. If you have questions, send them in. Send them to the email address. And the best question in the next month will get a chance to get one of these handy little foresight tumblers. You gotta make your own iced tea, but the tumbler is great.